Hi everybody, this is Miss Heather from the Hagerstown Public Library and it's been a long couple weeks since we've talked. Last week I put on Facebook a preview of what we were going to do for the month of January. I'm pretty excited. This week's going to be turning milk into plastic. We're going to make hot chocolate bombs or hot cocoa bombs. Those are like super popular right now. And I have a couple other fun projects um, planned as well. So those are the two I'm really, really excited about. Today I'm going to mix things up just a little bit differently. I would love, 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 love to see you guys do the project yourself and video it and send it to us. So what I'm going to do today is going to tell you what you need, what tools you're going to need for this and the science behind it. But I would love for you guys to send in um, videos or little bitty clips of you guys actually doing this um, experiment. This is something really neat and um, I want to see what you guys can do and something um, that's more interactive for you than me doing it for you. So let's get going. So this project is going to be is called turning milk into plastic. It's kind of a unique kind of thing I found online of course um, where a lot of our ideas come from and I kind of mold and mend them from there. Um, this was something I believe a teacher had found by just a comment she had heard from a fellow administrator. Um, she was very taken back by it. Um, so what you're going to need is a cup of milk. You're going to need vinegar, white vinegar or distilled vinegar, whatever you have on hand. Lots and lots of paper towels. This is going to be a part of your the sieving part of the experiment you'll need and food coloring is optional but it'll make it have a little bit more coloration to it. So the tools you're going to need is a strainer. So a colander, strainer, whatever you want. It works best with a, one with mesh instead of the holes but if you have one with holes just make sure it's got teeny tiny holes not real big ones that'll let a lot of stuff process through since you're trying to strain some of the liquid out. And then adult supervision is important for this especially if you're little bitties. Um, because this requires use of hot liquids and a microwave. So here's my instructions from me to you. Okay, so you're going to heat up the milk, about a cup of milk, one cup of milk for about one and a half minutes in the microwave. Now you don't want it boiling, you want it hot enough, kind of like enough to make your hot chocolate or your hot cocoa in the winter time if you use milk. Um, so then you need to add your vinegar. Start out with about four tablespoons of vinegar and if you need to add more you can add more the further along your experiment goes. Um, so four tablespoons to the one cup of milk if you want to double triple add it. You do the math. I'd love to see that happen. Um, so you can also add that and keep adding until it forms um, a curd which is kind of like cottage cheese. It looks like the little chunks you get in the cottage cheese. Those are called curds. Um, the acid actually is what breaks down the milk into this form of curds. So what you're going to do is place a paper towel on the strainer before straining your mixture. So you've mixed it all up and you're going to get like little bitty like kind of floaties and a little bit of chunks in there is what you're really looking for when this process starts to begin. Um, so you're going to press and squeeze the curds until all the liquid is out so there's not going to be any more liquid left um, when those are mixed together. Um, and strained. Um, if you want, you can add food coloring to it. Um, some of the colors I saw was like pink and blue and orange. Some of those fun colors. You can get a basic four pack at even our local grocery stores here in Hagerstown. Um, and then another thing you can do um, if you want them to be a shape because they will will eventually dry out after a couple days and become hard just like plastic or stones. Um, you can put that formation in like cookie cutters and make like a hard or whatever cookie cutters you have in hand or you can just freehand mold it and make whatever shape you want. So here's the why and the science behind all of this and what it's going to do. So you've got to let it dry for two to three days. Okay. So why? Why do we got to do that? So after two or three days when your shape or whatever you decide to make it into is completely dried out, no liquid, nothing left, um, it becomes very hard and it will not dissolve once you put it in water. It is solidified. Everything is solid. Um, it will not be melted by water. 
Um, so here's the thing. Milk is mostly water and protein. Um, roughly about 80% of the protein content is casein protein. And 20% is whey protein. In addition, milk also contains calcium, which makes your bones strong and builds you up and gets you bigger. Um, all that fun facts for you. Other minerals, vitamins, and butter, fat, lactose. We all know milk comes from cows. Um, if you're able to meet, drink regular dairy milk. Um, normally, the protein molecules inside the milk are folded up. But in this case, when you add in the acid in case, Vinegar is an acid, has an acidic property to it. Um, it causes the casein protein to unfold and rearrange. You've got little molecules in there and everything, rearranging and bouncing off of each other. And into long chains of polymer, which is kind of like fibers, but in food terms. And it's called acid casein. Okay, so acid casein is insoluble in water. Well, insoluble means it will not dissolve. That's a big fun word for saying it won't melt it won't break down and it pre precipitates out of the milk so this is something you get straight from milk it doesn't really matter if you use two percent vitamin one percent whatever just don't try making better getting the buttermilk because that's already been processed down to where it will almost just stay like it what it is um it'd be interesting to see almond milk and how that breaks down and holds up you may have to try that on your own and I may try that on my own as well. Um, so applying heat to this um, speeds up the process and makes the separation more complete. So when you have heat, it separates. So if you were to have some cold, nothing's going to happen. Um, there's no separation. There's nothing that's going to happen. So that heat is that key piece that you really need to do. Um, so the neat thing is... Um, when it heats it up, this makes the separation more complete. The resulting substance is called organic plastic. So this is something I've seen um, a lot of um, green companies moving to, um, is making doing more organic and more natural materials um, and something that will go back to the earth and won't pollute things. Um, and we don't have to worry about getting rid of it. Um, we usually don't associate milk with plastic because modern day plastic is synthetic, which is made from petroleum, which is from, made from fossils and fossil fuels type things. Um, that's a whole other story I could talk and get into, but I don't have the time for that today. Um, so, but synthetic plastic is a polymer just like organic plastic made out of milk and vinegar. Um, before the invention of synthetic plastic, these are some really cool things. Acid casein was actually used to manufacture buttons because dried casein is hard. So once that all dries and your um, shape or however you want to, um, whatever you want to turn it into dries, you could actually like even pre-poke holes into it if you make it small enough and make your own little buttons. That'd be really cool to see as well. Um, that's what they used to do way back when um, because it was insoluble which that's our big word which means it will not dissolve in water so you could take it outside and have it on a jacket or your shirt and it won't just melt away um so that's why they use that um process of making buttons and whatever else um so milk mixing milk and vinegar creates plastic which feels almost as strong as stone okay this is the discreant event making Mixing milk and vinegar can create H, a substance that is in the same category as petroleum product um, and is very unexpected. You, I w I've never seen anything until I got to like kind of researching some different like out of the box steam projects. Um, this is one of maybe a few things I saw that was kind of out of the box that I thought you guys would like and would be good to participate in. It's just two simple ingredients most people have in their houses. Um, so this is, um, in the same category as petroleum product is very unexpected. Um, buttermilk, yogurt, and cheese can be made into, in the similar processing using milk and various types of acid. So that goes with, um, a lot of dairy farms know a lot more about this subject than I would ever know, um, with processing dairy. So, um, like I said, um, every Tuesday we have our projects out on the cart. They are right now. They are um, 
at our front door, but I'm sure we'll get it moved back here after we get all the holiday cleanup done. Um, it's on the first shelf is the week project we do for that week. The next shelf is the week before that's been done and already videotaped and put out on our social media pages. And then the very bottom shelf is what we've done overall. I try to weed it out like maybe once a month, once every month and a half, um, because I know we have a lot of people that like to come in and get a bunch of products at once and like to do them when they have breaks or times. Um, so this goes live Tuesday at 11 a.m. It will be on our Facebook page. Um, it'll be in the next week or two. It always goes on and hits YouTube. Miss Jennifer uploads that for me and does a great job with that. Um, so this is Heather from the Hagerstown Jefferson Library. Enjoy!